Hi, I'm Alicia with the Big Pine Tribal News, and today we're here with our special guest, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself and what she does. Manahu, Iniwa. My name is Charlotte Backich. I'm a member of the Big Pine Tribe here in Big Pine, and uh, I grew up at our old Indian camp up the, on the hill, which burned down, uh, and I'm going to be uh, talking on what I believe is an important part of my culture, and uh, it's it's the baby baskets. I in my time I had several children, and um, my mother was so generous with her time and her energy and all her knowledge that she put into the baby baskets for me and my children, and you know uh, it didn't cost me anything. And now uh, it cost uh, quite a bit, a few dollars, and, and uh, I know a lot of people don't have it, and I try to help out the best I can. My dad told me that they made my basket in a day. It's not the going and getting and gathering everything, except that they had, they had everything ready. And uh, all his aunts came together and put stuff together and uh, finished it. And, and you could do it. I, I've i made a hood in a day, so if one person made the hood, the other made the, the bottom part, it, it could be accomplished. One of the most important things about our gathering is that everything is seasonal. And um, just like we gather our food in a, in, a, in a special season, and so our, we gather also gather our willows in a special season because it takes also time for them to, so so to speak, get ripe and get to maturity. And when it gets to the maturity, they're, they're good and strong. The willows uh, are ready f for stripping like, uh, like I stripped these so I could uh, um, weave my baskets together. And, and, and this is a lot of fun. This is a, I love doing it. And then, when, as we gather our willows, we uh, also gather these good, long, straight willows to uh, make the whatever we're going to um, make, like the baby baskets, the winnowing baskets, uh, the hoods, or, or any other type of basket that you're talented in. You know, you, you do mainly the things that you're, you're talented, talented in a good way. So uh, that's what, that's the steps you go. And, and mainly the time is right now. Uh, the end of October, some people say when all the leaves come off, you can see the nice, good, straight willows. So um, uh, so we, we try to gather the tallest and uh, largest willows we could find that are good and straight for our work. We go get the willows, and, and they have uh, skin on them. The skin is uh, uh, the protector of the insides. See how nice and white they come out when you scrape it like this with a wehi, which is a knife. You scrape it all around. And as you scrape, you turn each time. You turn the willow and scrape so you can get it all around nice and even. And... Um, if you don't, one side will be flat, the other side will be round. You know, when we go out and gather our willows, uh, we always say a prayer and give an offering. And in our culture, we do that for everything we take from who we call Mother Earth is our provider. We get everything from our, our Mother Earth. So when we go out, we're so thankful that we give a gift. We could give water, tobacco, sage. It comes from all within because we're so thankful we have this earth that provides everything, everything that that we have today came from our Mother Earth. So we're so thankful, in my culture anyway, for our Mother Earth. And um, so we want to treat her in a good way and, and, and have respect for her. And so uh, that's what I teach. When I teach my basket class and we go out, Everybody brings water, and we have tobacco for them, and we all gather in a circle, and we say a prayer. That That's really good that, you know, I we all come together and put prayer in our hearts 
for what we take from Mother Earth. So when did you start making baskets? Oh, I started making baskets when um, one of my kids, when they were little little babies, uh, broke their hoods on the basket. I'm I'm looking over that way because I'm looking at the baskets, and um, they broke the hood, which we call a tsukuna, that that's on the huba. The huba is a part that lays the baby lays in, and the top is a sakuna. So uh, I I broke mine, and you know my mother, uh, she didn't know how to put one together. So we uh, went down to the river, got our willows, and cleaned them, and and you know we we started to uh, put one together. I took the willows home and. Next day I came down to my mom's house and I had one together and she was so surprised and told me, oh, what a good work, that's good work because I copied my old one. You know, I had a pattern, it's like a pattern. And so I was so happy that she told me it was good, you know, in a good in Indian way, in a good way. And so uh, I felt good, you know, about, about it. So I continued making them. And so <clears throat> my mother was... Uh, the smoker and the stretcher of the hides. My dad was the the framer. I hear the frame that the baby goes in, and um, I was a basket, the hood maker. <laughs> so we 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 teamed up after I learned how. So we got through with the basket more more uh, you know more faster. Um, the people came to us when they found out my mom could make a baby basket. You know, the people came to us, and she even made uh, baskets for the basketball tournaments to raffle off years ago. So um, that was one of her things that uh, the people looked forward to buying raffle tickets to see if they could win the baskets. But... Uh, uh, and, and that was fun until, you know, that kind of grew out of style, so they start giving money away. <laughs> How many generations in your family have been basket weaving? Well, see, I know of uh, my mother's mother, my mother, myself, and my girls, and uh, my uh, granddaughter. That's five right there I know of, but I know way back before they were, they were our relatives did make baskets. And uh, my grandmother here, uh, my dad's uh, mother, she made baskets and uh, she made different types. And and um, that's my goal is to not only make baby baskets, but to make different types. But I don't have the time to do it because all these babies keep coming and we just keep making baby baskets for those babies and I think in in my mind I think that that's one of the most valuable things because uh, sometimes I'll, I'll go and, and uh, do a little um, do a little talk or demonstration somewhere and I'll ask the little children I said maybe you might have been one down at the center I said how many has been raised in a baby basket said, all the arms would go up <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was so cute. It really made me feel good inside because uh, that was uh, one of our ways, you know. And I'm glad uh, I could help keep one of our old ways going. And I'm glad that the mother and fathers out there want to continue keeping their babies and let them grow up in baby baskets. So they, they stay in there until they're about a year, a year and a half. As a kid, how did you feel about baby baskets? As a kid, I remember uh, the basket my mom and dad, grandma, made for me. I, I was born and raised in Reno until I was about seven years old, but I came back and forth to stay with my hootsie. I had I had this little girl I had to take care of. While, while the old people were in the garden, I would sit there with the little baby, and, you know, I looked at that basket, and I said, hey, this is my basket. So that little girl was in my basket, but after we moved back 
it was out of our house at the old Indian camp. We never could find it. And I, I really believe I, I knew, knew what happened to it. So, um, so I don't have a basket from here, but I had a basket from, from Reno Way, which was made with buckskin. And uh, so in my time in growing up, I had a, uh, one of the plain willow baskets and a buckskin basket. So I was I was I was happy, and and uh, yeah. So my brother, my two brothers are also raised in a uh, baby basket, and and all, all I know as a little girl growing up in Reno, there was a lot of baby baskets then because there was a lot of people that knew how to do it, and and they they did it regularly because they went to town and traded got money so they could you know it provided uh it helped provide food for them and clothes for their kids and things like that so how do you feel about basket weaving in today's society today's society i'm the way i feel i feel very proud and honored that uh i continued what i learned i started when i was about 27 years old i have gone to california basket weavers i'm still a member of them and I helped form the Great Basin Basket Weavers Gathering. When I was younger and had my own car, I used to travel around and go to all these gatherings. But now that I don't have a car, because I can't drive no more, so mm -hmm. I have a car and go to them and have fun with the ladies that you make friends with. And, and we show each other different ways to do things and see all the beautiful things that they make, because some make the little baskets and they beat them. All the tribes around California have different styles of making their uh, baby baskets. Every every tribe is different. We're, we're not the same. So um, the, uh, the buckskin is almost similar to Oregon and northern, northern Nevada, all up that way. And I feel very proud, not only because I know how, but I feel proud for my people. What does it take to make a basket? It takes a lot of patience. A lot of concentration, and uh, you got to know your work. You got to know uh, the strength of the willow, so you'll know how to tight to pull it. If it's a real delicate willow, you got to work with it in a delicate way, and 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 you got to make sure the willow is good and wet before you could work with it. Because if you don't, it's it, it, anything dry will crack. Your hair gets too dry, you, it'll crack. When your fingernails get too dry, you don't take care of them, they'll crack. So you got to um, know how to take care of your willows when you work with it. And, um, and at the basket weavers, they always say, oh, touch your basket. Talk to your basket. Tell your basket, thank you, thank you. They say these baskets, they love to be loved, just like anything else. And I'm mm -hmm. just, that's what they tell me, and, and I believe it because um, at one time these were alive. They came from the earth and they were alive. But in order for us to have anything, we have to go and cut them and, and, and make our material for whatever we're going to use them for. When you're working with your willows, or you're working with your beads, anything you're working with, if you keep making mistakes, if your willow breaks, if you feel uncomfortable and you're uneasy about working that day, you know, you got things going on in your mind, don't touch it. Don't, uh, don't bother it at all because nothing will go right. And I found that out to be true. So when something goes wrong for me, I just walk away, leave it, maybe come back in an hour or two, and then everything will go fine. Could you share a legend with us about basket weaving? This one family was camped out, and they had um, the daughter's uh, job was to get water. So she got the water jugs every morning and went down to the creek, filled her water jug up and uh, came home and she was she was thinking 
Oh, gee, how come this water jug is always half empty when I get home? So, anyway, she kept doing that, and the years went by, and she grew older. And then um, she asked her mother, and she says, Well, honey, you got to look around. Look around, Jill. And so she kept that in mind and so when she went down and get her water jug she was looking around looking around what could and then so when this little this girl now she's older she was on her way home and uh, she noticed on the right side why is it always on the right side that all the along the trail all the flowers are all bloomed except on the left side, they were all dry. And so um, she says, oh, that's why it's because my right side water jug has a hole in it and it's been watering this little trail here all the time. And uh, I never did notice it. She just waited for the flowers to come up because that was natural. And, and so uh, she went and told her mother and her mother said, see, you got to keep your eyes open and watch because you don't know what's going to uh, pop up. I'm Alicia with the Big Pine Tribal News, and we'd like to thank Charlotte for her knowledge and sharing her time with us. Thank you. So how we do?